You're listening to the Post Apocalyptic Media Podcast. Hey everyone, and welcome back to this fourth spoiler special podcast for The Walking Dead. This one is for season 11, episode 7. And what I'm going to do in this episode is talk all about that episode, that uh, that Walking Dead episode. And I'm just, I'm not going to hold back. It's going to be all spoilers all the time. And the reason I'm doing this is we, we broke it off from our regular podcast, which, uh, you know, that's kind of news and things like that. And this is more specific, catered just to your Walking Dead fan. So we hope you like it and um, I'll keep doing it as long as you like it. Uh, so this episode right here was called Promises Broken. Um, it, we get to see a lot from each group, pretty much every group except for Carol's group. We don't get to see Carol and, and Aaron and them. Uh, but we do get to see uh, you know, Maggie's group with Negan. We get to see the, the Commonwealth, or as I like to call them, the Creepy Wealth uh, group, which is you know Ezekiel and Eugene and Yumi and Princess. And then we get to see a little bit from uh, Daryl, who is now with Leah with the Reapers. That's where we're at right now. It's, it's kind of those three major groups are in this episode. Now, you might remember last episode the one with Connie, um, I absolutely love that episode. You know, and I, I talked a lot about it and I, I really sang high praise about that one because of the way it was done. You know, it was done very, very 80s horror and everything like that. And I feel like this one wasn't as good. Now, <clears throat> was it not as good because it followed that one? You know, was it not as good because um, it kind of went back to that that, that old, you know, cat, playing catch-up type of episode. I think that has a lot to do with it, really. So that's not to say that it's a bad episode. It's not, you know, nothing really bad happened. I just think that it, it we were on such a momentum. You know, we were going up on episode six, and then we had to go down a little bit here on this episode seven to kind of play catch-up with how everyone's doing. But the important thing about that is that the next episode, episode eight, is going to be the the mid-season finale. So it, it's it's crazy to think about it, but they're actually, they're going to break up the entire season 11 into three major parts. And I think each one is going to be eight episodes. I'm pretty sure. I can't count. I don't know math, so that's a problem. But uh, we know at least that there's going to be eight episodes in this first chunk. And the bad news is we have to wait until 2022 to get the next chunk. I don't know when exactly. I think probably January or February. That's usually how they do that. Uh, we will see. But so we have a long break. I mean, a long break, a few months. And uh, and it's going to be sad after this next episode. But we have one more, one more after this one. So let's talk about this one. This is episode seven. Uh, it starts out <clears throat> with uh, with Maggie and Negan and, and, and Gabriel and Elijah. And they're, they're walking through the woods and she's talking about making it to Meridian, you know, and, and Negan's pretty much like, wait, wait, no, they, we got guys chasing us, you know, the, the, the Reapers and the Reapers are going to, are at Meridian, you know, they're going to pretty much take over Meridian and, and that's where we don't want to be. We don't want to be near those guys. And she's like, no, we have to go back. Um, so he gets a little upset about that and he wants to break off and, and they have a little bit of a misunderstanding about that. And then uh, finally he says, you know, you know what, look, I will agree to do whatever you want as long as you just stop hating me, you know, just stop. And, and I think most people know why she hates him. Um, he's kind of of the mindset of, you know, why don't you just forgive and forget? And he actually talks about it more later in this episode, uh, more about his mindset, which is crazy. And, and she's like, no, like she has this grudge, you know, you, you killed my husband, you know, you killed the father of my baby. You can't, you can't expect me to just forget about that and just be best friends with you. So I think a lot of people can, can see her side of this, you know, and, and kind of empathize with her and, and just say no, 
But for some strange reason, a lot of people really love Negan, you know, even though all the atrocities he's done. But again, he points out later on in this episode that they, you know, Maggie's group did this to his people, too. You know, they they went in there and they killed a bunch of his people. And he's, you know, it's kind of a back and forth. That's the way he sees it. And she sees it. No, you just killed Glenn. That's it. That's all I see. You killed, you killed a couple of my people. And so th- there's always that anim- animosity between the two of them. But he basically says at this point, look, I want to make amends. And if, if I, I will do what you say, if you promise to s- just lay off me, I, he, he literally says, I don't want to have to look over my shoulder anymore. Um, and that's important to him. You know, he, he wants to be a part of this group, but he just, he'll never feel that way. And I don't, nobody else really treats him that way. Everyone else has pretty much forgiven him. I mean, we don't have Rick there. I'm sure Rick wouldn't forgive him, but, um, so Maggie's kind of the last one, uh, you know, that has to really forgive him. So we're there. She promises, she shakes on it. She says, yeah, okay, let's do this. Uh, later on in the episode, someone calls her out on it and says, so, you know, are you really going to keep this promise? And she's like, I'll try, try my best. So, you know, with that in mind and the the name, the title of this episode promise is broken. It makes you think, well, something's going to happen, you know, uh, but there are other promises throughout this episode that, that are make you think they might be broken as well. So we go through, well, I, let me show you this first. I have to show you this picture of Negan in my write-up. I, so I did a write-up on this a couple days ago. And uh, so look at this guy. So he just, he, he looks like, he looks like a completely different guy. This here, of course, is on the, the main website on postapocalyptic.com. Uh, he, yeah, he's, he's looking old, he's looking gray, but he still has that, that, you know, that little smile about him and it, it's great. It's great to see, but uh, yeah, it, it's really interesting to see how he's, how, if Maggie's going to forgive him and, and where he's going to go from here, because the comic books are quite different from where we're at right now. I, I think I say that every episode, <laughs> but it's true. So anyway, Ma- that's Maggie's group. And, and later on in the episode, they sit down and this is really important. This is something that I think, uh, is kind of a turning point of the the episode. They sit down and they, they talk a little bit. And she says, look, if you had it to do all over again, would you? And he says, yeah. And right there is where they cut it when they showed the trailer for this episode. That, you know, they showed that part and they showed him saying, yeah. And you're, you watch that trailer and you're like, well, okay, well, he regrets it. You know, well, he keeps going. In the episode, he he says after that, he says, I should have killed all of you. You know, he, he basically says the, the exact words, if I could do it all over again, I'd have killed every single one of you. And you can see that the camera goes to Maggie and her face is kind of like, okay, okay. You know, she doesn't freak out. She just is like, I should have expected you to say that. And he's not saying it to, to piss her off. You know, he's basically saying it like, look, we've been through a lot these last few days and, uh, a lot together. And I feel like I can be 100% honest with you. And I'm telling you 100% honest, honestly, that if we were to do this all over again, I would have killed every one of you. And that's only because knowing what I know now, um, you guys were a big threat to my people. You killed all of my people, you know, um, and Maggie brings up the point, you know, you, you guys didn't have children and, and, and families. And he says, well, what about Gracie? Where did Aaron get Gracie? Uh, so he knows, he knows about that. And he, and he even says, you didn't think I knew about that. Did you? Yeah. So it's, it's kind of, I don't know if the writers are trying to, you know, make us feel bad for him, make us feel for his side of things just as much as Maggie's, which I don't think we're going to because nobody really, you know, sat any of his people down. I don't think. No, nobody sat any people his people down in a parking lot and one by one, you know, played uh, baseball with their heads, right? 
he he kind of he had a, a unique way of doing things, and that's that that was the point of why well, he was maybe a little bit more brutal than she was. So anyway, is he is this approach that he's doing to win over Maggie? Is it going to work? Is this one hundred percent honest approach? You know, where he says what's on his mind, and he says, "Look." You know, I'm going to be honest with you. I would have killed all of you. Is that going to work? Is it going to win over her trust? I don't know. We'll see. We have quite a few episodes left to to see how that works. Okay. Now let's cut away to Daryl and Leah. Uh, when we meet... Now, of course, the episodes, you know, cut up pieces here and there. I'm kind of lumping together the groups into, into you know, the stories for each group instead of going back and forth. Um, that's how I do it in my write-up too. I just like doing that. It's more coherent to me, I think. Uh, anyway, so Daryl and Leah are at the Reapers and Pope just finds out that they can't find Maggie and her group. And he's furious. You know, the guy, I don't think I've seen the guy not furious. He's always furious. So he, he yells at these guys and you feel like he's probably going to kill them. Uh, but Leah steps in. She says, it was my fault. It was my call. Don't take it out on them. Um, I'll go out. I'll go back out and I'll find I'll find Maggie and I'll take Daryl. So they head out and you see Daryl. I don't know. Daryl. He's kind of weird in this season, I think. You know, Daryl's always been such a strong, uh, you know, just a confident guy who can make decisions. And now he's just running around like a little puppy, I think. Um, he really likes Leah and he really I mean, he's he's playing it. He's he's being very standoffish. He's not embarrassing himself. You know, he's not like, hey, do you still like me? Check yes or no. You know, he doesn't say anything like that. But he almost does. He kind of follows her around and he's like, so, uh, so remember that one time? You know, and it's a little embarrassing. And you can tell that she's not really into him. But I feel like there's, there's a little bit of hope there. It's like on uh, Dumb and Dumber when he goes, so you're saying there's a chance. That's what it feels like here. Um, so he follows Leah around. They're looking for Maggie. And they come upon this guy who is hiding in a bush. And he pops out. And they're like, hey, get out. You know, what are you doing? This guy pops out. And this is re really where Daryl's kind of taking charge again. And he's just telling the guy, what, you know, what if I just shoot you right now? I should just shoot you. And the guy's like, no, no, no. I'm with my family. My wife is hurt really badly. She's with my son. You know, I we need help. And they're all like, this is a trap. I mean, if I was Daryl and Leah, I would absolutely think it was a trap. I thought it was a trap the whole time I watched it. So they're like, uh, so so Leah calls back on her little walkie-talkie to Pope. And she says, what do we do? We, f we found this guy out here, this random guy. And, it, you know, it, she she's confused at why he made it past the guards. You know, they have guards all over the place. And how did this guy make it past the guards? So she calls it in a Pope and Pope's like, kill him. Just kill him. That's it. Um, and, but she decides not to do this for some reason. She has sympathy for this man. And so she says, okay, well, let's go find your family. Take us to your family. And the guy leads them into this dark warehouse, which is crazy um, I think if I was either one of those people, I would have not gone with them into this dark warehouse. You know, they, they literally just walk right in. They could have been ambushed at any time, but they trust them. They walk through, they go to this little secret hiding place. He has this really cool like HVAC system that he slides off to the side. And I, th I thought that's really cool. That's a good idea. Uh, I'm always looking for ideas for like secret doors and stuff. Right. So so he moves this, he goes in the back room and his wife is laying there. Her stomach's bleeding, her chest is bleeding and her, their son is there also. And Leah tells the son and the father, get out of here. Don't come back, don't look back because they know that this woman is gonna die and they know that she's gonna turn. Um, and they have to kill her, you know, that's they have to shoot her in the head. So they tell those two to take off, they run away and I feel like we're going to see them again. I don't know. It's such a classic, you know, like, oh, like, you know, Saving Private Ryan when the guy, they let the one German guy go. And then later in the movie, he's the one leading the charge where they're 
ambushing them and killing a bunch of their guys. It's it's kind of the same thing where they're letting this guy go, and later on we're gonna find this guy somewhere, and it's gonna be like, oh, why did we let him go? It's a pretty you know, I that's how I think it's gonna happen. Um, but anyway, so they let him go. The the mother slash wife says, thank you for doing that. I couldn't get rid of them. I know I'm gonna turn any minute now. And the, it would have been horrible. If they would have stayed here with me when I turned, it would have been horrible. Um, so Leah takes out her gun. She aims it at the lady's head. But she can't do it. She can't do it. She can't pull the trigger and kill this woman. So Daryl does it. Daryl's like, well, I'm Daryl. It's what I do. <laughs> I'm going to shoot this lady in the head. So he shoots her with this crossbow. And Leah says, look, thank you for doing that. Don't, don't tell Pope that I froze during the you know during this part and uh and then he'll he'll like you more he'll have more respect for you knowing that you pulled the trigger and, and shot this late and we'll tell we'll tell pope that you shot the guy too right that's gonna come back later it's absolutely gonna come back later so <clears throat> so that's where we end with them um i feel like daryl really wants he he feel like he feels like there's a hope there's hope to get leah away from the reapers I feel like he he thinks that um, you know he thinks he's gonna get Leah back, and he really seems to be fond of her for whatever reason. I don't know, um, and uh, I mean, like, don't we want to see Daryl with Carol? It seems like I don't know. They're like best friends. Maybe that's that's the point though, is that they're they can be best friends without being romantically involved. So there's that, but also it's it's weird that you know he really wants to go after this uh leah lady so so badly but i think that's what he th- and i think it's going to succeed i think he's going to get her away from the reapers so we'll see how that goes um okay so now t- on to the creepy wealth the commonwealth we have uh it starts off with princess and ezekiel right yeah princess and ezekiel are clearing out a building uh of of zombies and and dead bodies and stuff like that they're clearing this out to expand the commonwealth uh to these other buildings so that's kind of like their work release program for you know for their crimes that they did excuse me my hands are here their crimes that they did um so while they're doing that ezekiel you can see his health is getting worse and worse he's uh you know he we saw in season 10 he had a growth on the side of his neck which pretty much means thyroid cancer uh he you know he probably has a a a swollen lymph node probably i'm I'm not a doctor but it's probably a tumor in his neck Uh, and so we see him getting weaker we see him having problems with this and he keeps holding his neck Uh, but he he the way his hair is he actually holds it so that it covers that up so you can't really see Uh, he's able to hide it from other people well, the reason this is important is because a little later, what's going to happen. But at this point, we see him, and then it cuts over to Yumiko, who is, I mean, she looks great. She's in a clean, pre-apocalyptic suit. It reminds me of like in Fallout 3 and Fallout 4, when you find a clean suit, you know, like in a suitcase, and you put it on. It That's what she looked like. She looked great. And she, but she's still... She still has that fire. You know what I mean? She still is like, I I want my friends free. I don't want my friends doing all this work release stuff anymore. I want my friends free. And Lance is like, yeah, yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, one day they'll get like that. Yeah, it's, that's a great idea. And, you know, he's kind of skirting around the, the, the point there. Uh, well, then she talks with her brother, Tommy, and he is taken away. She's sitting there having a good conversation with her brother, and he's taken away. Now we know that Tommy doesn't want anyone to know that he is a medical medical professional, that he has, you know, years and years of experience and education, and he knows what he's talking about medically. He doesn't want them to know that because he doesn't. Well, I, I imagine it's because he doesn't want them to utilize that part. He just wants to be a guy that works in a bakery. You know what I mean? He doesn't want to have to be responsible for. I don't know. I I, I think that maybe I there's more to it than that but anyway the point is he has medical experience doesn't want them to know they take him 
while he's talking with Yumi, his sister. Uh, those white armored stormtrooper guys come up. They take him away. Nobody knows why. So Yumi finds Lance later and he's walking through a courtyard, you know, and she's like, hey, why did you take my brother? And Lance is pretty much like, well, we need him for something. We need him for a project. And she, I mean, you just say, hey, we need you for a project. Can you come over here for a second? Instead of running over and grabbing him all dramatically. But, you know, it works, right? That's, I mean, why have stormtroopers if you're not going to use them to grab people, right? That's what stormtroopers, well, anyway. <clears throat> so, so she's really upset about this, you know, because she's now the governor, Pamela Milton's legal advisor. That's her new role that we've kind of, she's been hinted at, you know, the whole, when they got their, their roles at the beginning, those pieces of paper that told what they're going to be doing. Uh, she found out that she's some hotshot, you know, and, and basically that's what she is. She's the, the, the governor of the Commonwealth's legal advisor and, and also her cabinet. I think she's the advisor to their cabinet. Um, <clears throat> so she's, she's yelling out, you know, like when Tommy got taken, she's yelling out like, Hey, I'm his lawyer, <laughs> you know? Uh, so she represents him too. So she, she's fig trying to figure things out trying to figure out why people are just running around taking people and you know why that's their way of doing it um well here's the thing is is we don't see what happens to tommy but we do see ezekiel come back later and he's a hundred percent he's you know he jogs down over to his friends who are still cleaning out the buildings and he says hey i feel i feel a hundred percent they gave me some medicine uh did some tests things like that i feel great and he even brings them little suckers, you know. He's like, here, I brought some suckers for you guys. Uh, and I think we're supposed to get from that that uh, what I got from it, at least, is that Tommy helped him out. Tommy was taken so that he could provide medical assistance to Ezekiel. And now, like, why would they do that? Why would they do it that way? Why would they take Tommy... I, I don't know. I mean, they're, they're trying to still impress these newcomers because they want they want the new group to tell their friends to get more people in. So they're still in this like honeymoon stage with them. You know, they're still trying to get them to uh, to like them. <clears throat> so that's what I think happened. I think they uh, they helped Ezekiel out. He's feeling better. And I think it was Tommy that helped out. All right. Now let's cut over to Eugene and Stephanie. Um, they were doing some cleanup too, cleaning out some of the buildings, but now they're out at this one part and they see this couple, these kids who are like making out, you know, in the ruins of a city and they're all dressed up really nicely. They have nice clean clothes, which is, you know, that's the Commonwealth way, but it shows that they're, they're, um, of money you know we actually saw them a little bit earlier they walked by the group and they said something i forgot what it was the the man said something like you know derogatory to the people working so now we see them later they're making out and so eugene sees in the background there's some undead coming out of the forest toward these this couple so he runs over there and he kills the the undead and the the guy is like hey why did you do that and eugene's confused he's like i just saved your life dude like, what? why are you upset about this? He says, well, we have private security to do this. I'm not really sure why he said that because I didn't see, I didn't see any private security around him, you know? And if it wasn't for Eugene, they would have killed the couple. They were that close, you know? So it was great that he did that. Well, then uh, there's a undead walking behind this kid's girlfriend and Stephanie kills it and the blood squirts on the lady's you know, fancy white sweater. And they're like, that's it. And the guy starts yelling at, at Eugene, calling him all these names, uh, insulting his intelligence, insulting him. And Eugene just punches him in the face. Uh, he's had enough of him. And the guy's like, and so right at that point, conveniently enough. So we see Mercer, who's the leader of the guards. He's the one with the red, uh, armor on we see Mercer and Lance run over 
from who knows where. Maybe they're the private security, like hiding in the shadows or something. Uh, they run over and they're like, what are you doing? What's going on? And so there's, you know, a little bit of a arguing going on there. And it turns out this kid was actually Governor Pamela Milton's son, right? Yeah, son. So <clears throat> the, when they find that out, it's kind of like, uh-oh, you know, anyone else, it would have been great, but Eugene punched the wrong kid. So they, they put Eugene back in prison. <laughs> He's back behind bars, and Lance goes in there to talk to him, and he says, look, all you had to do is help him. If you had helped him, you would have been a hero. And Eugene is like, I'm sorry. You know, he he just he just kept talking, and he was calling me names, and, you know, he was a little jerk, little uh, entitled little brat, so I punched him. But, um, so yeah, it's just funny that, that Eugene keeps getting himself into trouble and he keeps finding himself in these situations. So while Lance is in there in the prison cell with him, he's like, look, you know, I can't keep saving you. I can't, you keep getting yourself into trouble. We got to figure something out. Tell me where the rest of your people are. Tell me where Alexandria is, is what he's asking. He doesn't know it's called Alexandria, but he says, tell me where the rest of your people are. And, and Eugene is so just beaten down. He's like, you know what? Well, first he says no. And then Lance starts walking out and he goes, okay, if I were to tell you where they are, could you guarantee their safety? You know, could you guarantee that this is, this is going to be a legit thing? And the, and Lance is like, oh yeah, yeah, no problem. But the thing is, first of all, what does Eugene have up his sleeve? You know what I mean? Like, he's done this before where he's promised things and then he always kind of he leaves some details out or he adds some details to make it where it benefits him so we'll see what he why he's actually saying this to Lance and also if let's say they do he let's say he does say where his group is and they do get him over there what are they going to do are, are we going to see everyone at the commonwealth I mean, Alexandria is starving. Those people are starving over there. Uh, maybe this is something that when they get desperate enough, they get to that point that they're going to finally be like, you know what? Let's just do it. Let's just go to the Commonwealth. Let's see what happens. Um, and we have, you know, two thirds of a season left. So that could happen. Um I don't know. Well, I guess we'll see. But that's that's kind of how I think it's going. That's that's the direction I think it's going. And then at the end of the episode, uh, we're back to uh, Negan and Maggie. Negan shows Maggie and Elijah how to walk, walk and talk, and basically be whispers. They get some new masks, which means which they didn't show it, but which you know, were to, in, uh, it's implied that they cut the skin, the faces off of undead and they put them on. So Maggie and Elijah are dressed like whispers. They have the skin, the dead skin masks on and they're, wa they're, you know, Negan tells them how to walk with their shoulders down and everything. And so they go through a little whisper training and they, they make it. They they test it out actually because they have some some undead tied to trees and they have Maggie like walking by him and then they let one go and he comes right up to her and he like he like bumps right up to her and it's really creepy because I would be crapping myself I think if one of them was like sniffing on me to make sure that I was actually a one of them it's crazy uh, so they pass the test and. Their whole idea for doing this was to herd the undead, just like the Whispers do, toward Meridian. Um, and I, I think it's toward Meridian. I'm pretty sure that's what that's the direction they're going. So she gets them. She she brings this whole group over, and then she there's this building that has a bunch in there, and they're like locked in from a previous episode. So she busts down the the wood that's you know bracing up the the doors there. And then a whole new group come out. And so she's walked, they're kind of, you know, funneling the undead. And so the two groups of undead are coming and that's the end of the end of the episode. We see him walking toward 
something meridian and the, the two giant groups i mean there's dozens and dozens of of undead coming that way uh, so what they're going to do is they're basically going to bring these to the reapers and it's going to be a big battle royale between the reapers with their guns and the undead with their numbers you know the sheer number of undead um <clears throat> and i'm sure we'll see you know daryl and, and leah in that battle um let's hope that pope dies <laughs> it's is it too early to say that? I don't like the guy. Uh, let's hope he dies. Let's hope uh, the Reapers lose. And let's hope that Daryl and Leah make it out, kind of reunite with Maggie. You know, we'll see if that all happens that way. So for next episode, now the interesting thing here is it's called Four Blood, episode eight, the next one. But they don't have a trailer for it. They didn't release a trailer. At least, I mean, I saw it on AMC Plus and they didn't have one on there. And they always have a trailer at the end of each episode. So maybe either, I know I didn't miss it because I went back and I watched it again. Um, maybe they released it somewhere else or maybe they're waiting because it's the mid-season finale. And they want us to wait a little bit. Uh, it should be a, an epic episode. The description, here's the description on IMDb. Who has never let me down on these spoiler uh, descriptions. It says the Reapers defend Meridian from an incoming herd. There you go. It's an incoming herd from Maggie. Pope suspects Maggie is behind the attack. She is. Uh, while Daryl treads carefully, which, like I said, that's what he's been doing this whole time. He's kind of he's he's figuring things out. He's keeping his mouth shut, which is, you know, probably a good idea. Uh, and then it goes on and it says, Now, Alexandrians scramble to protect themselves when the violent storm leaves them vulnerable to walkers. Have we seen a storm on the show? It, it's sunny every day in the Walking Dead world. And they're not in Atlanta anymore. But when they were in Atlanta, you know, people from this area, I'm kind of close to Atlanta, were like, are you kidding me? You're going to be in the, you can't be in the summer in hot Atlanta and not have storms. It's just, it rains all the time. It's it's 100% humidity here all the time. So uh, so it's always a, a funny kind of thing about Walking Dead is it, it very rarely just stormed, you know, like a, like a huge, huge storm. So now we're going to see it. We're going to see a huge storm, violent storm, they say, and it leaves Alexandria vulnerable to walkers. So it's probably going to tear down the walls, things like that. And I think this part, this is all building up to getting the Alexandrians out of Alexandria um, and perhaps to the Commonwealth. You know, maybe it's just another thing that's going to get them to the Commonwealth. Um, that's my call. That's what I think is happening. So, yeah, that's episode eight Four blood. It'll be called. This one was called broke uh, promises broken and. I liked it. I liked it a lot. I don't know if I would give it, a, I don't know what kind of rating I would give it. You know, if I were to give the last episode a 10 out of 10, this one I'd probably give like an 8 out of 10. Still really good, but, and it tied up a lot of loose ends. It, it really played into the plot a lot, but there wasn't a lot of action. Um, and that's what I love, right? That's what we love about this show. So, uh, yeah, boring old plot. We don't want to see that. No, we do. We, we absolutely do. It's all for the best, better of, <laughs> of the entire season and episode. All right. So thanks, everyone, for watching. I hope you enjoyed this, my ramblings about my current favorite show. Um, if you want to check out the main podcast, you can head over to postapocalyptic.com where we have right at the top bar, we have a section for podcasts. And you just click on that. And the normal podcast we do with all of the news uh, of the week. This week, we're actually, I haven't recorded it yet, but we're going to have a very special guest on the show. So you can look for that. Uh, yeah. And we have all the latest post-apocalyptic news, everything from movies and TV shows and games and books and all that. Also to events. You know, we talk about Wasteland Weekend. We read about that. So, uh, so we try to cover it all. So if you're into that, definitely go check out the site. So once again, I am Sean, Senior Editor at PostApocalyptic.com, and I thank you all for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.